Well, hi to everybody. Um, this is the beginning of our eight Christmas weeks. We're starting Advent early. Everybody else starts Advent on December the 1st, but at New Life Church, just to be a bit different, we're starting on November the 1st, and we're going to do an amazing run-in towards Christmas this year. And we're going to look at Christmas through various people's eyes. I like to call them the people of Christmas. They're the people who are linked to the Christmas story, the coming of Jesus to earth in the Bible. People like the wise men from the East. And we're going to start this week by looking at people in the Old Testament who are linked to the story, people who prophesied about the coming of Jesus. Because for hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, before Jesus was born, among the Jewish people, the prophets, those who spoke for God, had been prophesying that someone was going to come and he was going to be the saviour of the whole world. They said he would come from God and he would be a light in the darkness of the world. They said he would be the king. In fact, he would become the greatest of all kings. And in the end, he will reign upon the earth. These were extraordinary claims that these men were making when they spoke about this coming one. And these things were prophesied by men such as Jeremiah and Moses, King David, Malachi, Daniel, and so many other prophets. And this morning, I know that Tony is going to be sharing about some of the things that Isaiah the prophet said about the coming of Jesus. And this coming one who they referred to became known to the Jewish people as the Messiah, the Messiah, this means the anointed one, the one who God has anointed, the Christ. The prophet said he's coming, they told the people. Wait for him, they said. Look for him. He will surely come. And one of the oldest and most extraordinary prophecies about Jesus the Messiah comes from a Gentile man called Balaam who lived 1,500 years before Jesus was born. This is three and a half thousand years ago. This is a real piece of ancient history. And his link to all of this was actually this man, another man, who was the king of Moab. And he lived at the same time as Balaam, about 1,500 years before Jesus was born. And his kingdom, the king of Moab's kingdom, was close to the route that the children of Israel were taking towards the promised land. And he'd heard stories about these people. He'd heard stories about the children of Israel, how God was with them. And he became very fearful. He was a really worried man. But he, had, he knew of a man within his kingdom called Balaam, uh, and this man, Balaam, was famous because he had a sort of dark power whereby he was able to curse people. He was able to say that terrible things will happen to you, and then terrible things did happen. And so he sent a message to Balaam, the king, king of the king of Moab, and he said to Balaam, there are people who've come out of Egypt. It's like a whole country, a whole nation is on the move, and God is with them, and I fear that they're going to tear apart my country. Come and curse them, Balaam. Come and help me. And so after various toings and froings, which we won't go into today because there isn't time, Balaam arrives and they take him up to a, to a hill and he's looking down over the camp of Israel um, and they say to him, go ahead and curse the people. And Balaam looks down over the camp of Israel and he says the tents of Israel, they're beautiful. They're like trees planted by the water. Great things are in store for Israel. And the king of Moab said, no. No, Balaam, what are you doing? I told you to say bad things. Why are you saying good things? And so they took him up to another higher mountain and he looked down over the camp of Israel. I like to think maybe he looked down at night, but we don't know that. Maybe he looked and he saw the pillar of fire down there. And then he begins to prophesy again. And instead of cursing the people, he says they, these people are going to have well-watered fields. They're going to have amazing harvests. God is with them. He's going to fight for them. In fact, whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. And whoever curses Israel will be cursed. No, said the king of Moab. No, no, Balaam, this isn't what I told you to do. And so they take him to a third place and he stands up high above the camp and he's looking down at them all. Thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in that camp below. And again, he says wonderful things about Israel. And then he turns to the king and he says, I cannot curse those who God has blessed. So stop speaking, the king of Moab must have said to him. Stop, Balaam, stop all of this. But then the Bible says suddenly the Holy Spirit fell upon Balaam 
and he calls out, my eyes have been opened. I see visions from the Almighty. And this time he's looking out towards the camp of Israel, but his eyes are lifted up towards heaven. And he calls out these most extraordinary words. He says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but he's not near. A star will rise out of Jacob and a scepter out of Israel. Extraordinary words. God had allowed Balaam to look far into the future, 1,500 years, 1,500 years into the future, and he had caught a glimpse of Jesus. He says, I can see him, this is Jesus, but not now. I'm looking at him, but he's far away in the future. It was as though he could see the coming of Jesus to the earth 1,500 years ahead. But... This is very amazing. He'd also looked further than that. He looked into a time when Jesus, the magnificent, the holy one, this anointed one from God, would be exalted and known throughout the whole earth. He will be the king of all kings reigning upon the earth. He calls Jesus in this prophecy a star. Our great star is our sun, isn't it? The great star in our solar system is the sun. And Jesus himself, as well as being called the bright and morning star, is called the sun, the S-U-N of righteousness. He says, I see him and he's going to be like a sun burning. And then he says he's going to be like a scepter. A scepter is like a rod that the kings had, often made of gold, often covered in jewels. You can see incredibly beautiful scepters that belong to, to this country in the Tower of London. They're a mark of the power and authority that the kings used to have. And he said Jesus is going to be like that. He had gazed into something so wonderful. He's saying that this coming one, this Messiah, will be like no one else who has ever lived or ever will live upon the earth. What a vision he had of Jesus. Not just the baby in Bethlehem, but this great and coming king. So did Mary know, 1500 years later, when she wrapped Jesus in swaddling clothes, she laid him in a manger, did she know that this was the star that was rising out of Jacob? This was the scepter coming from Israel, who Balaam had caught sight of all those centuries before. And then a question for us, what do we really know about Jesus? Sometimes I feel I've only seen glimpses and fragments of him. I want my eyes to be opened over these weeks. I want to see Jesus as I've never seen him before. I want to know him in my heart like I've never known him before. Let's just pray. Lord God, we worship you for these extraordinary words. Thank you that Jesus is this star, this great star, this son of righteousness who is going to rise over Israel, rise over the earth with healing in his wings. Would you open my eyes? Lord, could I see him like I've not seen him before. I know I've only seen glimpses. Would you give us such a sight of Jesus in these weeks, Lord, as we go on this road to Bethlehem? Father, would you open our eyes like you opened Balaam's eyes? Amen. Amen.